Welcome back. In our next lab, we're going to be creating custom Docker images using a Docker file. But first, what is a Docker image? A Docker image is a tar file or an archive of the file system of the container. And the reason that we create images is so that we can share and distribute these images across to other users and other environments. Once we have an image downloaded to our host, we can create new containers from this image. Many, many containers can be created from a single image. When we did the docker run commands in lab one, you'll notice that the very first step was to download the images from the docker hub and then run the container. But note that this download only happens the first time. Running docker run subsequent times on the same image will locate the image that's cached on the host and it will skip the download part from Docker Hub. So once we have images, to share images, we're going to use a central registry. Once we have our images, we can push our images to the central registry, and we can pull from this registry to download other images. So the default registry that Docker Engine knows about is the Docker Hub. This is a public registry. It's free to use. Um, today for lab two, we're going to create an account on Docker Hub and push our images to it. The cool thing about Docker Hub is that there's lots of images for you to choose from. For example, in lab one, we ran the Ubuntu, Nginx, and MongoDB containers that are located and pre-packaged for us on the Docker Hub. Pretty every major application or database that you can think of has a corresponding image on the Docker Hub. The Docker Hub is great for learning Docker or using prepackaged images. When we get to using Docker within the enterprise, you're going to look towards using a private registry or setting up a private registry. There's hosted options available, or you can do it yourself or host the registry yourself. The cool thing about hosting the Docker registry yourself is that the Docker registry is actually available as a Docker image. So you can do Docker run registry to run your private registry. Cool. So we want to create an image, but how do we create it? So to create an image, we're going to create something called a Docker file, which is a file that contains a set of instructions to build our image. Once we have our instructions written in a Docker file, we'll pass it to the command docker build and Docker the Docker engine will build our image. So below is an example of an Ubuntu image. Uh, or a, the Docker file for an Ubuntu image. Um, we can see that we're inheriting from the base Ubuntu image, we're adding our application, we're exposing a port, and then we're specifying the entry point, which is the starting process for, which is, specifies the starting process for our container um, to be executed when the container starts. Um, so this Docker file will lead me into my next topic, which is understanding something that I call Docker, Docker secret sauce, which is layers. Each line in this Docker file corresponds to a new layer on the Docker image. Image layers, the cool thing about image layers is that they're cached. Every layer is built on top of the previous layers before it. And what happens is if you only change the last line of your Docker file, Docker, the Docker engine will reuse the first three layers from its cache and will only rebuild that last layer. You're going to see a lot of advantages both at build time and push time. So um, when you do a Docker push to push an image to a registry, um, the, Docker, the, the Docker engine will check to see what layers already exist in your remote registry and it will only push the layers that need to be updated. If you think about this in the context of CICD pipeline, once we push your images once, subsequent pushes can be very fast. So which means your CICD pipeline automation can be executed very quickly. Um, note that the to optimize the caching for these layers, we want to organize our Docker file such that the lines that change the most are located at the end of the file. This will uh, you know, the example would be to put lines such as adding your source code at the end, since this is likely to change on a daily basis. 
this way, and anytime you're invalidating that layer, you're not adding, you're, you automatically invalidate all the layers after it, but if it is the last line of the Docker file, you're optimizing the caching mechanism there. So another thing to note about these Docker image layers is that the image layers are read only. Whenever you create a container, it creates a thin read write layer um, on top of this stack. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to be able to reuse these image layers across a multiple instances of the same container. So multiple containers from the same image and B um, having many different images that share the same base image layers. So take this diagram, for example, in this chart, application one, application two are both using the Fedora image layer. So the Fedora image layer is written in its Docker file, but only one layer of the Fedora uh, needs to be stored um, on this host. Application three and application four is very similar. They both use Tomcat and the Ubuntu layers, but only one of these is stored locally. So how does this work? So there's two key things that make this work, the union file system and copy and write. The union file system merges these image layers and it presents a single file system for, for every running container. Copy and write copies files that change in each container up to its writable container layer. So say a container wants to write or edit a file in one of these underlying layers, that file will be copied up to the top layer. Um, and that, that top writable layer is created for each running container and it's dedicated to that container. So um, when a file exists, when a file is edited, it now exists in two layers. It exists in that lower uh, image read only layer and also exists in the writable layer. Uh, the union file system is going to flatten those out, handle the conflicts, and when it puts it together in the single view, you will only see the edits from the, the writable layer for the container. So the reason we do it using copy and write, or the reason that it's implemented this way, is it allows us to keep those underlying image layers read only. And that means that because of read only, we can reuse all of these layers across images and containers. So why do we care? I mean, reusing these layers is going to save us a lot of space. For example, you can run an extreme example, but you can run 1000 containers from the same image. And that does not mean that you have a thousand times the size of the image of space running uh, of allocated on your host. Rather, most almost all of that, those image layers are going to be reused. And then for each of those thousand containers, you're just going to have that very, very thin read write layer on top. Um, and then the same reuse applies to, of course, images that share layers um, underneath. So overall, um, you're using much less space for your Docker containers running on your host. It's more efficient. And if you can remember from lab one, um, one of the benefits and uh, one of the appeals of using containers is that we can pack many containers on a single host um, and save money on our infrastructure. So here's an example of me doing a Docker push for a Hello World application, and you can kind of see the benefit of using Docker layers here. This is an update. So I've only updated the last line of the Docker, the Docker file in this case, and you can see that the very first line says pushed. All subsequent lines after that um, are layers that are already cached and available in the registry. So the result is that this push was very fast. The very first time I pushed this image, um, it was a lot slower. But when you have when you have subsequent pushes, and remember that CI/CD pipeline, you're going to be you know pushing daily or multiple times per day. You know those subsequent pushes are going to be extremely fast. So we're going to learn more about layering and caching um, firsthand in our lab today. Um, so for our lab today, we're going to create a custom Docker image, um, and we're going to do that by creating a Docker file. We're going to build that image using Docker build and run that image using Docker run locally on our host. Once we're happy with our new, our new custom image, we're going to push our image to our, our, our account, our custom account on Docker hub. So you'll be able to log into the Docker hub web interface and be able to see that publicly um, on the internet. 
Next, we'll do we'll demonstrate the benefits of uh, the layer caching. Um, we'll update our image. We'll do a small update, um, and then we will rebuild and repush, and we'll see firsthand a lot of those uh, layers being reused.